Let's talk about uh, fibroids. We have discussed this topic before, but uh, more and more patients feel that I should tell them more about it. I'm going to be very simple in this regard and say the first thing, what are fibroids? Fibroids are non-cancerous growth of the muscle tissue of the uterus. As many as 70 to 80% of all women will have fibroid by the age of 50. Therefore, fibroids are extremely common. It's one of the commonest conditions it's been seen in Africa more than any other country. Therefore, fibroids are much more endemic in Africa. What are the symptoms of fibroid? How would I know that I've got fibroid? Most commonly, they can give you what you call pressure symptoms. In other ways, you've got bladder problem or constipation, problem in urinating or, you know, even urinary frequency, lower back ache or even abdominal pains. Then they can give you what is called abdominal distension, where you feel that you're pregnant, but you're not pregnant because a fibroid can grow to almost a nine month old baby. I have delivered a fibroid of more than 4 kg, which is the maximum or the, the biggest weight you can think about. But fibroids can grow to that size. Fibroid may disturb your menstrual cycle, cause bleeding with clots, severe pains as well. And sometimes it can be just mild cramping and pains. But fibroids, because are constantly and growing in a very slow pace, then the, the pain become more and more and more as the fiber become bigger and bigger. It can give you heavy bleeding with clots. It can give you longer bleeding, frequent bleeding. It can give you in sporting. Therefore, fibroid can give all those problems which I've just mentioned. What is it that is causing fibroid? We don't know. Nobody can tell you that fibroids are caused by that and that. We can blame the food. We can blame the environment. But mainly, we know that they are familiar. If one of your relatives got fibroid, you've got a very high chance of having it. What type of fibroid do you have? You've got what's called intramural, which is growing in the muscle of the womb, and those are the commonest. And you've got what is called subserosal, which is growing basically on the outside of the layer of the womb. And you've got what is called submucosal, which is growing in the cavity. And these are most commonly associated with miscarriage and recurrent pregnancy loss. And you've got what is pedunculated, which is like a polyp can be also inside of the cavity of the uterus or it can be outside and growing towards your, your belly button. Who get fibroids? We know no, by I... now that fibroids are age-related. In other words, the more, you know, the, the older you are, you have more chances of having fibroid age 30 to 40, and they are more common in African women as well. Therefore, African women have the highest number of fibroids compared to any other race. And also family or familial, if somebody in a family have fibroids, you stand to have a higher chance of having fibroids. Fibroids can be associated with obesity as well with high blood pressure as well. What complication which fibroid may lead or you may have because you have fibroids. The commonest one, it may be heavy bleeding which lead to anemia, severe pain, you know, which is related more to size. In other words, the growth pressure of the fibroid. And it can cause what is called urinary obstruction, whereby the fibroid is pressing the bladder and the urine cannot come out. It can be chronic constipation due to the pressure to the rectum. And commonly, we see a lot of fibroid due to infertility, making a person or a woman difficult to, be pre to get pregnant. How can a fibroid cause infertility? Firstly, the location. If the fibroid grows in your tube, they can close your tube. The size, if the fibroid become bigger, especially more than 15, 16 centimeters, then they tend to cause what you call mechanical obstruction. In other words, the tube cannot reach the eggs, the egg cannot reach the tube, and the sperm cannot meet. Therefore, these three people become you know, far apart from each other, and therefore pregnancy become 
a very difficult mission. When you when can you see the doctor in case you think you have fibro? If you have got heavy bleeding and you need transfusion or the bleeding doesn't stop, take longer, you need to see your doctor. Pain, severe pill drop pain, menstrual pains, inability to control your urine, change in your period or your cycle, persistent lower abdominal pain, inability to fall pregnant after you know a year of attempt with no other reason, most likely you didn't have any scan, therefore nobody knows that you've got fibroid or not. And some people may present with recurrent pregnancy loss due to fibroids, and we need to go and remove that fibroid so that pregnancy can happen. What treatment can I have for fibroids? We can think about medical treatment, which is very common. That can be pain medication for pain, and it can be hormonal contraception, it can be also gonadotrophin releasing hormones, which will suppress the fibroid. But remember, medical treatment for fibroid is temporary. It cannot be permanent. It cannot help you. It won't remove the fibroid. It can shrink it, but the fibroid will still be there. There may be non-invasive treatment, which people may think about, which may help them. Worst is what's called uterine artery embolization, which is called by the which is done by the radiologist. It's a good treatment for fibroid, but it's not a good treatment for somebody who wants to be pregnant. Therefore, if you want to get preg to be pregnant, you cannot go and do uterine artery embol embolization for a number of reasons. The first one, uterine ampli uterine artery embolization may affect the inside of your womb, in other words, the endometrium. It may affect the blood flow to your ovaries. That may actually reduce your chances of getting pregnant. The other method is what we call an ultrasound method, which is a high-intensive ultrasound wave, which you know come in and kill the fibroid itself. Also, this method is not recommended for women who want to become pregnant, simply for those two reasons. The first one may affect the endometrial, the thinner, the inner part of your uterus. Secondly, it may affect the blood flow to the uterus, and then you may have problem with conceiving or even have problem of keeping the pregnancy. Now, surgical intervention is usually recommended for most patients who'd like to be pregnant. By that, it's laparoscopic and mimectomy. By that, it can be laparotomy or opening and do a a manual my myectomy, fine, or it even do what is called robotic myectomy. Now I'm going to talk about the diet. Can a certain diet cause a person to have fibroids? I don't know, but is any diet which may reduce or may help me to have lesser symptoms of fibroid? Yes, there are such diets. First, we can think of eating more greens, which are healthy, giving us iron, so that when you lose a lot of blood, then it's replaced. Reduce excess, excessive beef as well, which they said it may be related to fiber growth. We don't know yet, it's still under study. Uh, eat a lot of cereal, which may help you with constipation. Eat less sodium, because sodium may increase your hypertension. Uh, eat less, uh, eat more fruits, sorry, eat more fruits and then as well use more unsaturated fats, which will actually will give you, will make you much more healthier. And add a lot of grain in your food and carbohydrates, increase your iron intake by taking a lot of, uh, eating more chicken, white meat, a boiled spinach, and something like uh, beans as well, got a lot of iron that may help you so that if you're losing a lot of iron due to bleeding, you can uh, replace that. Increase folate intake, lentils, rice, spinach, corn, and egg also are very good in that. And increase your vitamin B12, which will help you to increase your chance of pregnancy and also will actually, you'll be able to build your iron status, which will help you to have actually healthy and balanced life. Thank you.